know what? All right. Since we were just talking about um Bria, guess who's on the line? <laughs> oh, let's bring Bria. Bria, hey. Hi. <laughs> Bria, well, up? first of all, YouTube, you can't see this. I'll be posting this later. Can you see me? I can see you. We'll uh -oh. post this later. Uh oh. D don't flash. <laughs> <laughs> Bria Fleming from from Summer House Martha's Vineyard, the actress from Summer House Martha's Vineyard, is here. Oh, welcome, welcome. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Before I before I ask you anything, what did you want to say since you're calling in like a caller? Listen, I just wanted to answer a couple of questions. I don't know. Okay. Do you have any? I, I don't know if you had any questions or if there was something specific you wanted me to point out. I was okay. Like, mm -hmm. Um. Who are you friends with currently on the cast? Everyone. Including Jasmine? Yes. Okay. Are you guys in a good space? Yeah, we're all in a group chat. Oh. <laughs> oh, what, what's in the group chat? Nudes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, 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 it's cool. We check up on each other. Um, we just share updates and keep up with the episodes and talk about it because a lot of us didn't get to see half the things that have happened on the show. And a lot of it is new to us, especially the interview part. So sometimes we're like, oh, you really said it about me. You really felt that way. So we're just checking in and, you know, being positive and respectful. Oh. Um, I know a and lot of people heard know anything, if, anything about a season two. I don't know. And I've, I saw it on tweets. Like, you know how people retweet it? Like I heard it's a season two coming, but we haven't heard anything yet. Well, they got to get on it. It's summer. <laughs> I know. Did you guys film in May? This, this we, past we filmed in September, last September. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it was so cold. I know. That's why we look like we weren't interested in the moon mask, but it was just the weather. Yeah, <laughs> I see. swear it was the weather because it was really, really cold and that fire wasn't keeping us warm and people thought like we weren't interested, but it was so cold. And I was like looking like ET phone home, but it was really, really cold. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, because did you find out that Amir was the one that basically caused the fight between you and Mariah while watching with us? No, so Shanice had put me on like a couple of days after it had happened. She had let me know. And then I kind of just left it alone. I'm just like, all right, well, like I didn't know to believe her because like half of the time we were really, really drunk in the house and people don't realize that. Yeah, and then when I saw the way. episode, I was a little hurt. I was just kind of like, damn, like you actually knew and you could have interfered and said something because it could have prevented a lot of chaos. And in that moment, we both were on edge because I knew I wouldn't wash my dog stuff with other people's items it's unsanitary yeah. i'm not that type of person regardless of what you people think in the comments <laughs> but uh i would never do that so i was a little confused when mariah came up to me and I, I, and I think a lot of people missed when she said that she took my personal laundry herself and put it into the dryer and somehow my dog stuff got mixed with hers but i was like i never would wash my things with your personal stuff so i was a little confused but a little, I had a truly in my hand. So I was kind of drunk and like confused at the same time. And I'm like, I know I didn't do that. I know I just washed the pool towels, but like, damn, like I was a little confused, but we did get a little serious and was about to, you know, chew our heads off. It was a, it was a real moment. So that where I wish are you guys today, you and Mariah? So we are very respectful of each other during our premiere. You know, we talk, we are in a good place. We both respect each other. She's a beautiful woman. I have no ill will towards her. Um, we're on a good term, you know, a speakable hugging she's term. So. She is in a group chat. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Do you think if you guys do get a season two that Mariah will be welcomed back? I, I would love for her to come back. I said that in numerous interviews. I mean, at the time that we voted her off and I was in on that, I was in on that at the time because I was angry and I didn't know. And I knew in my heart, I didn't do what she said I did. And like, to be pushed or touched. I don't like people coming into my personal space. That was a violation for me. But I mean, we've had moments on the show where we were connecting and I wish we people would have seen that side. They didn't get to see that side when we got to connect and talk with each other because we had cool moments, even in the hot tub, we mad chill. So, uh, you know, to see that moment with the dog's laundry, it was unfortunate. And yeah. yeah. Well, you know, reality TV, whatever's going to get people talking. Listen, I'm here to entertain. Don't forget that. Okay. Well, you know, here's a, speaking of entertaining. Yeah. Um, 
How are you adjusting to, because the Bravo universe is, it's a, it's a whole thing. As soon as yes. you're on Bravo, it becomes a whole thing. Can you talk a little bit about that and how your life has changed since being seen on this show right um, after a very you know, popular show like Real Housewives of Atlanta? Well, the only thing that's changed is just the diehard fans. The When you're on a Bravo reality show, TV show, um, there is a lot of fans that are like serious about the Bravo community. You have the good and the bad. So I think the only thing is, is just like getting the, the hate and trying to like live my everyday life because people have to, you know, know that we are human at the end of the day. We're here to entertain. Uh, our show is non-scripted. So, you know, you get what you get. And sometimes in a moment we go through these challenges, but like, you know, give us a chance, like get to know us. So I think a lot of it is just kind of trying to deal with the hate and the harassment because mm -hmm. we get good harassment and then we get the bad harassment where we have to kind of filter that out. Yeah. But um, that's the only thing that changed is just the fans, you know, we get the good and the bad. So it's just kind of navigate through that. How was your experience on Watch What Happens Live this week? Oh, my God. It was so much fun. It, it was like I didn't realize how much of a big deal it was until like I got to the studio and I saw my name on the door and everyone was just like, oh, can we do this, this and this for you? And I'm like, oh, my God, like this is real. And then I saw like Mariah Carey's photos, J-Lo's photos, Halle Berry. And I was like, wow, like this is awesome. And meeting Andy and being with Amir, like a lot of people don't know Amir and I have a great connection. It's like a brotherly sister love and, you know, we vibe. So it was really nice to be there with him and just to kind of vibe out with Andy. And it was so much fun. I felt like I was in my element. So you, you, you've, or you've been watching the recap and you saw my thoughts that I shared about Amir's appearance on Watch What Happens Live. Yes. What, what is your reaction to what I had to say? I mean, he was a little flirtatious. I saw a little flirtatious going on. I think, you know, Amir likes to have a lot of fun. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I just think that he, you know, some people like I flirt with men and women. Um, it comes, it's a Gemini thing and it also just happens. I'm a very flirtatious person. So maybe he kind of has those characteristics like me, but I saw a little flirtatious going on and I was like, Ooh, okay. Mm. You know, what about the thirst? I, 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 that I felt like he was being a little thirsty in his appearance. No, Amir is like, he is very loving, and I think maybe, you know when you send somebody in a DM and you're kind of butt her, and then you're like, one day, I think he was a little butt her and was just kind of like trying to, I don't know, flex on like, see, I told you you want to know my name one day, but it came off a little bit too much, but I don't know. You made a comment about Kyle, who's on the original Summer House. Yes. That reaching out to Kyle, and Kyle got back to him, but never. Was it Kyle? Carl. Carl. Carl? Oh, was it Carl? It was Whichever Carl. One. <laughs> Carl ignored. Did it Carl ignore? I think he said, did he ignore he him? He responded like one. He, he responded back to him and then he didn't respond. He didn't keep respond. And yeah. then he like, yeah, he didn't yeah. respond back. But Oh, whoa, 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 Amir. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we covered a recent story about um, you being wrongfully arrested. in yes. Khan. Can we get an update in regards to what's going on with that? Like, where are we? with that yeah so at the moment we are launching a, pol a police investigation in the police department as well um as the cans mayor and everybody that's like in that town of Khan. Mm -hmm. um they are corrupted there and there's a lot of people that have been coming out a lot of people of co color um have who have been coming out with stories the similar stories and with the similar excuse so we're trying to come together. My lawyer, she's a black lawyer from France, like no joke. And uh, she said it's not common and it's very, it's unnormal what happened to me. And also the prosecutor as well as the U.S. consulate and embassy said the same thing as well. So they said that th that's not the normal protocol, that it's not the, it's not normal and that they're sorry that that happened to me, but they did launch an investigation and that's going on right now. So I'm not going to give up until justice is served and like to be honest with you i don't even think there's a woman that was involved i honestly think that i was just kind of pro racially profiled by the police department there yeah. and they I tried mean, to make for, for those that aren't familiar with what happened can you just briefly let people know what happened when oh yes on? so i i every year is the, uh the Cannes film festival is one of the biggest festivals in the world and i'm in the film industry so is my younger sister and we had accreditations to attend the festival and uh, attend events there. And uh, 
we were at a Zara and, and we were shopping around for different dresses for an event in the evening time. We were actually booked for Campari and the police came and detained us slash arrest us, took us in, stripped us butt naked twice, drug tested us twice. Um, without a translator twice without a translator. They denied a lawyer. Um, they denied us to call our parents. The only reason why we were able to get out was because we were able to make a phone call to Simon on the way there and shared our location. And then they took our phones after that. So um, they said a lady claimed that we robbed her and Zara. And I'm like, how can we rob someone in broad daylight? But they didn't know. Like, And I had a driver outside. I had a private driver and everything. But she delayed. if it was a lady, uh, how can I rob you in broad daylight in front of like hundreds of people in the Zara? People are taking pictures of us. And also the timestamps wouldn't make sense because when you file a complaint, you have to go to the police department in France, according to what my lawyer said. You can't just like call up and be like, this person that looks like this robbed me and like mm. go arrest them and detain them because it could be fake news. So it's not the timestamps aren't really adding up with what the story the police told Simon, because this is what they told Simon. They wouldn't tell us anything. Wow. So, Why yeah. Were told? Yes. And the per luckily, the detective that was in contact with Simon was German. Everybody spoke oh. French. I don't speak French. So yeah. he had to speak Deutsch to Simon in order to get a hold of what was going on. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you're just joining us. We're talking with Bria Fleming from the show Summer House Martha's Vineyard. Bria, since we we're talking about Simon, Simon made an appearance in this week's episode. How is Simon dealing with now being a part on the show and the conversation now that he's seeing what everyone was saying about him before he arrived? And they, they changed their stories really quickly after that. What's his reaction to all of this? He loved it. He loves everyone. One thing about Simon that I even said last night on Watch What Happens Live is that he doesn't judge people by what I say, which, and that's what I love about him. He goes in with a clear headspace and a clear perception of everyone, and he lets you know them show their true colors. So for him, yeah, I can complain all I want, and he can calm me down. But when he came in, he's like, I'm coming in with a good energy and drinks, and I want to get to know everybody for my own. And that's what I love him for. Um, just being super, uh, it's very rare because some men would just be like, oh, I have a problem with you because you disrespected my wife or whatever. But with him, it was different. And he came with love and the alcohol and the good energy. And I was like, yes. And I knew they would love him because he's such a loving individual. Like he's very, very sweet. Um, and I was like, are you sure you want to give out these watches? <laughs> and he's just <laughs> like, yeah, because I did say something, but he uh it was his decision and like i said he's a reseller so uh it was something from his the kindness of his heart whether it came from his brand or his business or not it's still expensive and like i said i don't get free watches every day i live with the man <laughs> i get one for christmas freaking uh what's the holiday birthday and um valentine's day that's it so it's nice that you know you have a nice little collection like already I, yeah, I have like yeah i have about like five or six okay how long have you guys been <laughs> together you and uh, simon we just made one year, May 23rd. Yep. Okay. We celebrated our one year anniversary in Cannes during everything that was going oh, on. Damn. So yeah. we, you did just say, refer to yourself as the wife. Well, I call myself wife. It feels like wife Simon's right next to me. Why are you not in the, in the shot? <laughs> Why aren't you in the shot, Simon? Come over here. Say hi. Hey. And there goes Milo. We really want to see Milo. Get out of the shot, Simon. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> Right. Hey, he looks better, right? Doesn't he look better with his hair like fluffy? Because people were making <laughs> fun of his hair on the show and said he looked kind of old. With well, the look, hair everyone's so going to have their opinions. Everyone in our live chat is going to have their opinions. I'm sure they have opinions on the way I look, too. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> Period. <laughs> we all going to get shaved. Whatever. Exactly. <laughs> Can we really talk to Milo? I'm sorry, Simon. We, we loved you on the show. Thank I you for the watches and the, and the tequila. But let's, 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 this is the star. Oh, hey. hey hi, Milo. Hey. Milo is he'll just say a hi very to you. If you say dog. hi, Milo, he'll say back. Say Milo, hi. He's a little. I'm sorry, sleepy. Milo. Oh, I'm calling Milo. You were calling him Milo, but I I'm like sorry. it. Oh. Hi, Milo. You say hi to Kim. He loves you. He is so unbothered, y'all. Milo, and he's calm. Oh. This is how he is on the show. He doesn't bark. No. He just sleeps and behaves like he's not a. He's not a. Uh, a bad dog a question, though you know you you came onto the show saying that he's your emotional support dog do you have documents to prove that 
I do have the documents. Oh. <laughs> um, do you want to know? Do you want to know the story behind uh, how I have an ESA? It's really quick. So yeah. I've had an ESA dog since I was 15 years old. And um, what happened was I was dippling and dabbling with marijuana when I was younger and actually got laced at the age of 15. So I was laced in high school and I lost my mind and my parents thought I was never going to come back. And I did a lot of therapy and then that turned into the therapist recommending animal therapy. And why don't you try to get a dog to help you with responsibilities to take the stress off your mind? Like I couldn't leave the house. I was paranoid and had anxiety attacks. Ooh. So then I got a uh, emotional support animal, which was my first, which was a Pomeranian. <laughs> and it helped a lot, like just going on walks, taking him to the dog park and, dogs are very loving they know they have like a soul they know when something's wrong so it's it stemmed from that a lot of people never knew like they think oh she's fine now i'm fine i was able to snap out of it because some people aren't but i still get anxiety here and there i don't have the panic attacks anymore thank god but it did stem i was laced at the age of 15 you know which caused wow. so um i do have the documents i am better you know i'm 27 years old but uh you know I always relied on just having a pet with me and the love and care and responsibility that it comes with and getting up early, going on walks, going to doggy daycare, wherever and doggy mm -hmm. outing. So it, it Why really exactly helps. didn't you share this with your friend Jasmine before arriving with uh, Milo? You know, at the time, everybody knew in the home that a dog was coming. I do want to clarify that they oh. knew a dog was coming. They didn't know who was bringing the dog. Because oh. with these shows, you have to get clearance. You have to let yeah. them know that a pet's coming. You can't just show up and be like, okay, my dog's here. I'm the queen of the house. You have to get clearance. So everyone knew that a dog was coming, but they didn't know who was bringing it. And then when they knew it was me, then everything changed. And I want to know if it wasn't me, would it still be the same energy or would mm. it be different? Mm. But they knew. Okay. All right. I'm not that type of person. I'm not a people think that like, Oh, she's the demon girl. She's crazy. She's the brat. No, I have morals and respect. Allegedly. But, <laughs> uh, you know what, Ken? I'm playing, I'm playing. Well, I appreciate you taking time. Uh, one final question. One yes. final question. I keep rooting for a reunion because I do feel like there needs to be clarification. Yes. Any talks or rumors of a reunion possibly happening for Summer House Martha's we Reunion? We are trying to fight for that as of now, like we would love one. I mean, I know it's not known in reality history to give a first season a reunion. It's usually happens down the line, second or third season. So I would really love one and I would love everyone to be on there because we could just clear the air about certain situations. But as of right now, no. So yeah. it sucks. But yeah. Well, look, nothing nothing is impossible. Nothing's impossible. Again, guys, be sure to uh, check out Summer House Martha's Vineyard every Sunday at 9 p.m. Bria, thank you so much for calling in. We appreciate you. And sidebar, Thanks. Bria, you're not supposed to call in on platforms like this without permission from PR. Goodbye. Uh-oh, whatever. <laughs> Bria makes her own rules. Bria makes her own rules. Anyways, I'm going to take some more calls. That was Bria Fleming from Summer House Martha's Vineyard. And Simon was there. And the real star, the real star of the show, Milo. <laughs> The real star, he's very laid back, very chill. Ooh, you bring the lighter, I got the fuse. You make a fire, I'll ask you, follow my leading.